very thankful to be gathered with you this afternoon as we worship God in spirit and truth. In preaching from God's Word this afternoon, the lessons entitled Follow the Evidence, the Three Confessions of Martha in John 11. So if you would, turn with me please to John chapter 11. We're, beginning, we're going to begin with the first verse of John 11. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. 
And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with the grave cloths, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. And so in this passage of scripture that we just read from John chapter 11, I'm focusing this afternoon on three critical confessions of Martha. And the first of these is number one, Martha confessed the evidence that Jesus gave of his deity as the Son of God by the miracles, signs, and wonders he performed. Miracles, by the way, which had been witnessed by many. Go back to verse 21 as well as verse 22 there of that reading in John 11. And notice very carefully what Martha said to Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And so Martha confessed that Jesus was he who miraculously healed the sick, caused the blind to see, cleansed the leper, and raised the dead. She confessed the same thing that Peter preached, you remember, later on in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verse 22. She confessed the same thing Peter preached when Peter said in Acts 2, 22, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. She confessed what Nicodemus confessed in John chapter 3, verse 2. Remember when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. We know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one, no one can do these signs that you do unless... God is with him. She confessed what the blind man who was made to see confessed in John 9 verse 32, where he said, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. And notice what he says, if this man, referring to Jesus, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And so, number one, Martha confessed the evidence that Jesus gave of his deity as the Son of God by the miracles, the signs, and the wonders he performed. Miracles that had been witnessed by many. Number two, Martha confessed the evidence of the scriptures that there will be a resurrection of the dead in the last day. If you go to verses 23 and 24 of John 11, Jesus told Martha, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, and listen carefully, Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So look at that marvelous confession that Martha made there, where she said, I know that he, referring to Lazarus, will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. In other words, she didn't have to guess. She didn't have to speculate. She didn't have to surmise. She said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So Martha confessed right there the evidence of the scriptures that there will be a resurrection of the dead in the last day. That's what she confessed there in verses 23 and 24. And by the way, we all remember, this is the very thing that Jesus rebuked the Sadducees for, their failure to believe in the resurrection of the dead. So what did Jesus give as the reason for the false teaching of the Sadducees that there was no resurrection? He told the Sadducees in one place in Mark 12, verse 24, Are you not therefore mistaken, talking to the Sadducees, 
Are you not therefore mistaken? In other words, in error. In other words, deceived. Are you not therefore mistaken because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God? So Jesus gave the Sadducees the reason for their false teaching and false belief that there would be no resurrection in the last day because they did not know the scriptures nor the power of God. The same thing he told them, we read in another account, Matthew's account in Matthew 22, verse 29. And notice in this account in Mark 12, verse 26. I especially like this account because we read in Mark's account here, Jesus says to the Sadducees, but concerning the dead, that they rise. In other words, Jesus is saying, you can know the dead are going to rise in the resurrection at the last day. But concerning the dead, that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the burning bush passage, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are therefore greatly mistaken, greatly deceived, greatly in error, Jesus tells the Sadducees in Mark 12, verse 26. And so Jesus rebukes the Sadducees for their false teaching that there will be no resurrection at the last day because they failed to know the scriptures that gave evidence that the dead will rise on the last day. The very thing that Martha said she knew, that she knew there would be a resurrection at the last day because of those Old Testament scriptures. So that's number two. Number two, Martha confessed the evidence of the scriptures that there will be a resurrection of the dead at the last day. That's number two. Number three, Martha confessed the logical conclusion, a conclusion based on the evidence of Jesus' miracles and based on the evidence of the Old Testament scriptures which point to Jesus, those Old Testament prophecies, those Old Testament scriptures which were fulfilled in Jesus, which pointed to Jesus, because she said, you remember, to Jesus, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Look at the latter part of that verse there. She pointed to Jesus as the one who was to come into the world. What's she talking about there? She's talking about the Old Testament scriptures that were fulfilled in Jesus. The Old Testament scriptures that pointed to Jesus, that prophesied of Jesus. That's the implication of what she said in the very last part of that verse, where she says again, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. How did she know that? Because of what the Old Testament scriptures spoke regarding the things that were fulfilled in Jesus himself. Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, and whoever lives and, be and believes in me shall never die. John 11, verses 25 and 26. So Martha confessed the logical conclusion. Martha knew of the miracles of Jesus. And not only that, she was minutes away from seeing her own brother Lazarus raised from the dead. And she knew that the Old Testament scripture spoke of a resurrection at the last day. And so her confession that we see she confessed the conclusion that was logical and irresistible. When Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The only conclusion to be drawn based on the evidence is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures. And this is the conclusion drawn by Martha. The all-important confession she made that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. All those who love the truth confess the same. Why? Because the evidence demands it. This, by the way, is biblical faith. This is biblical belief. That is, biblical faith is to know based on the evidence. 
And so number three, Martha confessed the logical conclusion, a conclusion based on the evidence of Jesus' miracles and based on the evidence of the Old Testament scriptures, which pointed to Jesus. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. The Old Testament scriptures point to Jesus. The Old Testament scriptures prophesied the things that were accurately fulfilled with precision by Jesus alone. Things regarding his life upon this earth, his suffering, passion, and death upon the cross, and his resurrection from the dead to be seated on David's spiritual throne, ruling over spiritual Israel, the church, which he purchased with his own blood, the kingdom of God. And Jesus confirmed his authority as the Son of God by the miracles he demonstrated in the sight of many, many witnesses. The Apostle John summarized his gospel account including the things that he wrote regarding Lazarus, by the way. Remember, this is John 11 that we're pointing to here. The Apostle John summarized his gospel account, including the things he wrote regarding Lazarus in John 11, in this way. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these, these what? These signs, these miracles, these wonders that John recorded in his gospel account. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. John 20, verses 30 and 31. In other words, what is written by the Apostle John regarding the raising of Lazarus from the dead, in the presence of many witnesses, among other miracles John witnessed and recorded, were written for one purpose, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So we have to draw the conclusion that those who are truly honest with the evidence and those who are honest with themselves can come to no other conclusion. So the conclusion that Martha drew and the confession that Martha made can be summarized on this slide. What the slide says is follow the evidence. The Old Testament prophecies fulfilled in Jesus plus New Testament testimony of Jesus' miracles by credible eyewitnesses equals overwhelming proof that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. It's simply a logical conclusion based on the evidence. It's using our God-given faculty of reason applied to the scriptures. The slide I just put up says, follow the evidence. Biblical faith equals knowledge based on evidence. We know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. This is quite unlike the denominational concept of faith, which they put forth as some sort of a blind leap in the dark. This is quite the opposite, and this is quite unlike the denominational concept of faith because we see that true biblical faith is knowledge based on evidence. No different, absolutely no different than knowing that George Washington fought in the Revolutionary War, chaired the Constitutional Convention, and was our nation's first president for two terms. And so this afternoon, we too can reach the same conclusion and make the same confession that Martha made based on the prophecies fulfilled in Jesus and based on the miracles he performed in the presence of many, many witnesses. The greatest of these miracles that he performed is his own resurrection from the dead, the empty tomb, 
Christ died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and this he did not in a corner, not in some dark place in secret. This he did in the presence of many witnesses. And we have in the New Testament the reliable testimony of credible eyewitnesses who saw the risen Lord. And so today, this afternoon, if you have never made that good confession, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, then why not make that confession today? Because the evidence demands it. Through belief, repentance, and confession of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, you make yourself ready to have your sins washed away by the blood of Christ in the water of baptism. And for the Christian who has turned away from God, be restored to the faith by your repentance and confession of sin to God in prayer. So this afternoon, if the church can assist anyone with any of these things, we'd like to ask you to come forward now as together we stand and sing.